Chris here with a quick tip for you all. In this video, we have a sponsored video by Turbo Dork. This is their company, brand new company with um, brand new color shift paints. And so this is a showcase video of those paints. And we are gonna work on a Stormcast Eternal. This model has been given a primer of gloss black using a um, uh, Steinal Res gloss black with an airbrush at around 20 PSI. Both the shield has been left off. We're gonna use Radium from Turbo Dork. This is a fun color shift paint. This is basically gonna be a, a bit of a gold with a green casts and um, when you're looking at this uh, in the light it, it uh, shines with a gold and green tint we're gonna use a Badger Patriot 105 to lay this color down we're spraying it around 20 psi and of course you're making sure that your primer is uh, nice and dry and as you can see here we're laying the color down I have not thinned the color out we're spraying it straight through the brush we are not using any thinners anything at all and we're just laying a nice even uh, coat down onto the shield and the model himself and as you can see here the camera really doesn't do it justice but you can see there's a green cast when you're looking at this thing in real life it's uh it, you can see a lot more green uh coming back at you but it's predominantly a uh, gold we're going to use Minotaur's Ghost Tint with some Liquitex Flowade and uh, a very heavy helping of uh, medium uh, to thin this color out. You can see here I'm just adding a couple drops of medium, well, a lot of drops of medium. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to uh, help that green uh, tint as well as kind of provide a bit of a shade. Now I'm using the Ghost Tints because they dry with a transparency to them as I really don't want to uh, use a matte finish because that will kill the metallic luster on this model and we definitely don't want to do that because uh, it kind of kills the uh, color shift ability if you use a matte. You can still see the color shift uh, through a matte, but it just, you know, you want the maximum effect here. And as you can see here, so we simply lay it down, uh, allowing it to reside within the recesses. We're not laying it on too heavily. And of course, once it's dry, we're going to give this a uh, just a little sealing of um, pledge floor shine here. Basically, it's just an acrylic gloss varnish I use all the time on miniatures and we're just laying a nice even coat down onto the model one layer will do and basically this is primarily to seal the uh, ghost tint because again ghost tint oftentimes I often recommend that you seal the model after using ghost tints because sometimes you can get some color transference and what have you next we're going to use radium again and basically I'm just going to spray it at a zenithal type angle just straight down to the model just to reestablish some of that base tone next I'm going to use citrine alchemy from scale 75 I'm going to use a small little dry brush here and basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly dry brush just the raised edges. I'm not looking to create a, a whole lot of highlight onto the model. I just want to pick out some of the high points and as you can see here just a light little dry brushing around uh, the upper portion of the shield and the icon itself in the shield. Here you can see on the Stormcast I'm dry brushing the face and his crest on his head as well as catching the high points on the armor. Again I'm not looking to put a whole bunch of this color down. I'm only looking to just get some of those raised edges again just to kind of um you know provide some uh contrast and such and again i'm not looking to uh, you know kill that nice color shifting ability here i'm simply using some silly putty to uh, mask off the sword because that's what i'm going to work on next uh silly putty is a great way to mask off models because it does not stick to your paint job even if it's not sealed i've also laid down some black onto the shield uh probably should have used probably a bit more of a gloss on there but that's okay and we're gonna use uh raspberry here and this is a really fun one here as well this is really fantastic stuff as basically it, it mostly shines a blue but in certain lights you'll see that purple shine back and uh, again, this is one of the Turbo Dork's uh, color shift colors, and it is just fantastic. I'm going to use Golden Thalo Blue with Red Shade. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this onto the cloak and any other areas of the model that I want to be sort of um, a matte or just, you know, differently uh, colored as well. So I'm using it for the cloak, the inner portion of his shoulder pad, as well as the um, majority of the shield itself. So once it's dry, you can see there. And the real f fun part is that red shade. You can see how it shines almost a blue purple back at you. And that's a kind of a fun color as well. We're simply going to add a little bit of 
white to this color and use that as a highlight. You can see once you add just a teeny bit of white, it uh, changes the color dramatically and it loses really that nice little red shade it has. Uh, if you really wanted to preserve that kind of shiny red gloss that it does uh, have, you really just have to use the white sparingly just to, but otherwise, uh, you know, just throwing this blue on here. Again, gives us uh, more of a imitated kind of color shift. But again, I think uh, because we have so many colors at play on this model, I figured, uh, you know, we'll try and keep things somewhat simple. Adding a little bit more uh, titanium white to the uh, mixture, and I'm just going for just corners and just little odds and ends here and there. Just a really ma minimal amount of highlighting done. Again, just the outer portions of the cloak, just the final edges of inside, just these little initial highlights here up on the shoulder pad. Again, just the tiniest of highlights going here and there. Again, if you want tighter gradients on your highlights, simply just, you know, mix more layers or you can continue to glaze up or whatever you like. Here we're going to use Turbo Dork's Blue Steel. And basically we're just going to use this as an edging. We're not going to uh, apply too much to the uh, sword itself because again, with these color shifts, if you start throwing glazes on top and anything like that, or start doing some really huge uh, layers uh, of highlight and such, you'll just end up killing the, uh, the color shifting ability and then, you know, kind of what was the point, right? Rakar Flesh here, just for the scrolls, I'm going to apply this to the model and the shield. Mornfang Brown, this is just for his, uh, his uh, little loincloth uh, things, I can't remember what the heck those things are called. But anyway, it's just really quickly here, we're just using this color uh, on this area. Wild Rider Red, this is for the little tuft of hair on his helmet. Again, we're just going to quickly throw this down onto there. And again, this is going to bring some visual interest to the model. Again, because it's really kind of a red-orange and it's going to play nicely with the blue-purple that's coming back at us. Agrax Earthshade is next. And we're going to apply this to the uh, little um, details on the... Uh, I don't know, what is it, the loincloth? And of course, we're going to also add it to the scroll work as well. And pretty much, we're just going to leave that as is. Of course, if you want to take those scrolls a little bit further, you can throw some uh, dry brush highlights on there and, uh, you know, bring those up a bit more. But again, I wanted the matte appearance to really kind of contrast with the bright metallics. Garber Crimson here next with the uh, hair. And again, we can see we can bring more little contrast. And we're bringing it down a bit because, again, that's kind of a red. Next, we're going to come back with some radium. This is the same color we've been using from the very start and this is basically we're gonna uh, just cover up uh, see where like we have this sword is kind of hung on to for with the uh, handle now the one thing about brush um, using a regular brush to apply these colors is you'll have to apply more than one layer but anybody who's used metallics before will know that you just simply have to lay a few layers down we could have base coated that area in black before we laid that gold down but uh, I you know I felt like living dangerously Using a little bit of Drakoff uh, Nightshade, just simply to create a little bit of separation from the gold and the blue of the blade. Uh, again, I don't want to use too much because I don't want to kill that metallic luster. Gorthor Brown here next, and we're simply just going to lay this down as a quick little edge highlight. Again, if you want to lay down uh, much cleaner highlights and create more of a gradient in there, you can simply just lay down more colors. You can mix them and what have you. Fire Dragon Bright, we're going to dry brush this, and this is just going to the ends of the hairs. As you can see, we're keeping a very light hand as we work our way across the hair, just concentrating mostly on the ends, but bringing it slightly up towards where it uh, meets up to the helmet. But other than that, that is it. And of course, all that's left is to finish off the base. And as you can see here is the finished guy. We've all glued them all together. And that is it. So I want to thank Turbo Dork for sponsoring this video. And uh, I definitely would recommend these color shift paints. They are a whole lot of fun. Thanks for watching.